Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in the workshop this week, well, I'm going to see if I can revitalise this old hand plane. Wish me luck. It's coming up next. So, me and hand tools don't really have a, <laughs> a great deal of affinity. It's not that I have any sort of aversion to them. It's just that doing what I do, or doing what I certainly doing what I did, have done for the last 20 years, basically fitted furniture, built-ins from painted or veneered MDF, with occasional little bit of hardwood trimming. There's just no real need for hand tools uh, in that sort of environment. It's all very much power tools, all very much production-based. In fact, the only three hand tools, other than the set of chisels that I have, is I've got a, a, an old sort of Stanley Bailey, English-made, number four smoothing plane with the obligatory wobbly handle. Uh, I've got a Stanley, little cheap Stanley, 25 pound block plane, which are a little bit hit and miss in terms of quality. That one's quite good. And I've got a Quang Sheng low angle block plane. Uh, they were all used for the usual sort of trimming tasks, trimming doors, maybe infills, that sort of thing. But I've never had any great need for any more hand tools than that. But it was when I was doing my recent birch pine Wengi side table, and also the little bathroom shelf that you may have seen if you're a patron supporter, and if you are, thank you very much. Uh, it brought home that the, the little smoothing plane, whilst it's a perfectly decent plane, wasn't really the right tool for the job. So I looked into getting something else, something a little bit bigger, something with a little bit more heft, and settled on something like a five and a half jack plane. There's, there's plenty of these around on eBay, they're not expensive, uh, and I picked up this one uh, for about 30 quid, uh, off eBay, uh, and basically I'm going to try and get this functioning nicely. Uh, it's sort of planes at the moment. The blade needs a lot of work. Uh, it's more of a <laughs> sharpening quadrant than a sharpening bevel on it at the minute. Uh, and obviously we'll give it all a, a general clean up, but the purpose of the exercise is not to do a full restoration on this. I'm not doing the full Paul Sellers thing where we make, you know, uh, this look like new, like something your grandfather had in the loft wrapped in oiled paper and was handed down to you as a family heirloom. The, the purpose of this is to get a working tool out of it. Um, and, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to give this a give this a whirl, give it a bit of a clean up, uh, get that blade sharpened, and we'll see if we can get it uh, cutting nicely. Ooh. Okay, so what have we got here? Um, it's, a, it's a Stanley Bailey a five and a half jack plane, made in the USA, so left hand drive. And as far as I can tell, as far as I've been able to ascertain, it's a Type 15 uh, from 1931 or 32. Uh, we'll just pause to ruminate on how a plane, a hand plane made in the US during the Depression, winds up in my hands in here in London almost 90 years later. Uh, yeah, there's a story there somewhere. I'm not too sure what it is. But overall, it's not in great shape. It's not terrible. Uh, it's, it's not great cosmetically. Now, uh, the lever cap <laughs> has a, a piece taken out of it, a nice little chunk nibbled through there. <laughs> Common practice is to when you take the, the cap iron, the chip breaker, off the blade is to use the, the lever cap. And uh, we were always shouted at in at school in woodworking classes for doing that. Uh, and that's perhaps <laughs> the reason why it's got a big chunk taken out of it. I don't know if that's going to uh, cause me any problems later on, but we'll see. Uh, overall, the whole thing is just kind of brown with rust. And it hasn't seen a drop of oil or, or a clean in a long, long time. So uh, lever cap's got a bit of damage. Fingers crossed it'll be okay. I'm not convinced it's original to this plane, to be honest, because when it's on its uh, screw, its locating screw, it's not centered across the, across the blade. So maybe that's a, a later addition from somewhere else. Uh, as I say, the blade and the cap iron, chip breaker, uh, are, are, seem to be okay. Rusty, the blade desperately needs a good sharpen, but it does seem to be. Uh, seem to be in reasonable general condition. And again, the plate itself, you know, there's not a whole lot to go wrong with these. So we'll, we'll have it, take it apart, give it a good clean, but really. The main thing I want to do whilst it's all assembled with the handles on and everything is to get the, the bottom of it 
cleaned up and properly flattened and get the sides tidied up as well so it starts to look a little bit shinier and then we can worry about taking this centerpiece off called the frog uh, and then we can dismantle all the screws and things give those a good clean up get rid of all the sawdust and the caked in muck and rubbish in there and uh, then we'll see if we can reassemble it and get it working I'm wrapping a length of P120 abrasive around a piece of MDF and clamping it down to the bench, then with a firm even pressure, sanding down the base of the plane, checking now and then for peaks and troughs. When I'm happy with the flatness, I move on to the sides, pausing to take a breather occasionally and to check progress. Once I'm happy with the results, I can move on to very gently rounding over the edges of the plane where the sides meet the base, and the same with the heel and toe, just enough to take off the sharp edges. And then finish off with some hand sanding on the upper edges of the plane body, again just enough to take off any sharpness and to make it a little more comfortable to hold. And yes, I probably should have worn gloves and a mask. Oh, that was very hot work and very dirty as well. So. That's that done. Gonna wipe my hands down. Let me start uh, stripping the little mechanical bits off. While I catch my breath, I'm taking the easy option by sanding the rust off the outer faces of the removable parts with a little orbital sander, starting with the lever cap, and moving on to the cap iron, and then the cutting iron. Note that I'm not going anywhere near the actual cutting edges. This is purely cosmetic rust removal of the flat faces. Okay, that's cleaned up reasonably well. Uh, it is reasonably flat and you know, I've softened off the edges and cleaned everything up as best as I can with it as it is. Uh, I've taken the blade and the other bits off obviously. Uh, I need to remove this middle piece. This is called the frog for some reason. I don't really know why. Let me do that. That's just held on with two screws at the front here, and they'll just unscrew. And at the back here, there's a little uh, yoke that fits over a screw that adjusts that backwards and forwards. Um, that's for uh, on the block planes. You can change the size of the mouth. This is effectively doing the same thing. You can move the whole sort of blade assembly back and forth, not the depth of cut, just the whole thing to make uh, finer shavings or not. So we'll just take this off, it's held in with oops, two screws, one and two, and the washers. And we just carefully take off the assembly around that setting screw at the back. Uh, we've got this screw in the centre here, this is just for retaining the lever cap. Oops. And with those off, we can give those a bit of a clean up and a bit of a flatten and get the sawdust off everything. Uh, on this one, there doesn't seem to be a way to get the this screw off. Norm on, on the other planes I've got, this will actually come back far enough to remove that completely. But it doesn't seem to be the case on this one. And I don't want to force it so we'll clean it up as best we can with it in situ like this uh, and then do the same with all this muck and rubbish inside here so gloves on this time I think and we'll uh, get on with that I'm cleaning up the frog with a small wire brush then moving on to the plain body and then, wrapped in a twist of paper to protect the newly cleaned threads, I'm cleaning up the screw heads with a cordless drill and a bit of sandpaper. And finally, the smaller parts are cleaned up with a tiny wire brush on a Dremel knockoff that I bought a decade ago. Finally, I found a use for it. And back at the sanding board, I can clean up and flatten the face of the frog. So I've just finished flattening off the frog. That's all coming up nicely. It was bugging me a little bit that I couldn't get rid of, the, couldn't get the the knurled nut off this that changes the depth of cut. It's running really smoothly and really freely, 
but it should come off and I couldn't see any reason why not and it got to the point where I just couldn't turn it anymore I didn't want to force it because I didn't want to risk damaging the the little yoke and lever that interacts with the blade to get to the depth of cut in fact as I took it to the point where it felt like it wouldn't turn anymore there was no pressure at all on this yoke, on this little lever. So I, I sort of powered through it, if you like, and it was just a slightly gummy thread right at the very top. And that's all come up really nicely. So I'll give those a quick clean up when I've got a second, which is good because I can get a, a wire brush on that. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've got the uh, cap iron or chip breaker you might call it, cleaned up, uh, just did a couple of strokes across the sandpaper, across the abrasive, really really flat and that fits nicely on the back of the blade or the ca uh, cutting iron uh, and there's no no gap in there at all, There's no you're not going to get any shavings under there, you can't even get a, a fingernail under there when you're, when you're holding it together. So that's nice and flat. So the next thing we've got to do is uh, talk about sharpening. Now, I'm the last person to try and teach anybody how to sharpen because, as I said earlier on, I don't really use hand tools much. Uh, I put a, a little bit of an edge on my chisels occasionally when I need them. But, you know, I'm not a sharpening guru. Wars have started over sharpening approaches. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what I do for the moment. As I get more involved in hand tools, if I use hand planes more and that sort of thing, then I will probably change my sharpening methods. But for now, let me show you what I use and what I do to get an edge on a blade like this. To get a 25 degree grinding bevel, I'm using a honing guide, this one by Veritas, and I'm using a simple little measuring jig to let me get the angle right. There are many ways of doing this. One of my favourites is a little 25 degree wedge cut from scrap on the mitre saw that you can visually check against. And with the blade nipped up in the honing guide, I can check the blade for square and adjust it if necessary. Okay, so just like before, nothing special. Piece of sandpaper wrapped around a board. We've got our cutting iron in the honing guide. And we're just going to run this back and forth dry onto the sandpaper just to get us that, that grinding angle. Uh, as, I, as I said earlier on, it's more of a, there's not so much as a bevel on there as a quadrant, so it's going to take a little while. So we'll do a little bit of this and I'll come back to you when, I'm, uh, when I've got it finished. I'm using lapping film as a sharpening surface, that's thin abrasive sheets, these by 3M, that are spray glued to a flat surface, this one's an old kitchen cabinet door, in coarse, medium and fine grits. And starting with the coarse, you'll have to take my word for that, I'm putting the primary bevel flat on the surface, then raising the back of the cutting iron ever so slightly, I can start making steady movements, trying to keep a consistent pressure until I feel a slight burr on the back of the blade. And then move on to the next grit, repeating the process. Finally, I'm taking off the burr on the back of the blade with the blade flat against the surface. And yes, in my excitement at having three new sheets of film to play with, I forgot to use any lubricant. Still worked pretty well. That's what I tend to do anyway. I was taught at school to strop against the palm of your hand. I had a load of kids walking around with cuts in hands. Works okay for planar irons, not so good with chisels, just, you know, word of warning. Uh, I could probably strop against a piece of leather or use a cutting compound against a piece of MDF or T-cut or whatever, many of the other many varied ways of doing it. But that works for me. Let's pop this plane back together. Feels pretty good. Let's pop this plane back together, see how it cuts. Okay, so first things first. Let's get the uh, this little set screw in. This is the one of the frog. Bears against. It's got a little. Yeah, we'll put that in about halfway. Yeah. I'll squeeze them on along that collar. Settle that into there. 
Wind them in a bit. It's quite a long way back. Now I can pop these screws in with our washers. Tell you what, turn you around so that you guys can see what I'm doing. It's better, isn't it? Okay, so these just go in. them down just ease them off a little bit so that you can move the frog if you need to yep still moving yeah what I probably should have done before I did that was pop this on never mind take a little oil in there With this on, I'm just going to make sure that that yoke falls into place. Bearing in mind it is a left hand thread. Yeah. Nice and easy. Right, let's uh, We can also have this set screw going in there. Let's reassemble this. So this goes this way. There's a little wipe over with a cloth on the surfaces that bear against each other. I'm just going to pop that in there like that, moving over and around. So there's a couple of mil of blade showing. Sorry, that fits on. That snaps down nicely. Mm -hmm. Those just starting to show through. After setting the plane to cut evenly, it's time to make some shavings. First, on some rough sawn oak. And then the real test on a stack of glued up birch ply. Ooh. I'd say that was pretty much spot on. Give me a second. So there we are, that's a Stanley Bailey Type 15, uh, number five and a half jack plane from 1931 or 32, uh, as far as I can tell. Given an extended lease of life simply by basically sanding it, uh, sharpening it, and oiling it. Um, amazing, uh, considering the condition it arrived in. I didn't hold out much hope, 
but it's come together really well with the absolute minimum of toolkit, it's got to be said. So I'm really very pleased with how it's turned out. I'm trying to avoid all those R words, restoration, renovation, refurbishment, because that's not what I've done here. If I wanted to do that, then you could really do the whole number on it, get the handles off and really sort of clean it up and make it pristine. I just wanted a working hand plane. Uh, I wanted a five and a half jack plane, something with a bit of heft to it, to do the cross grain cutting, and that seems to do that extremely well. Uh, and I'm really pleased with it. So yeah, uh, if you happen upon one of these, uh, say, I can't even begin to imagine how many they made. It must have been hundreds of thousands. Uh, if you happen upon one at a knockdown price, even whatever state it's in, I'd say give it a try. Uh, pull it apart, sand it, sharpen it, oil it, put it back together again, and you may well have something that's uh, a fully working tool and gives you a bit more sense of satisfaction than just buying one from a shop. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it uh, and hope you've uh, found it interesting and useful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, share it out amongst your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop videos. I want to take a second just to thank all of my Patreon supporters, because without the Patreon support, well, I really wouldn't be able to keep the lights on here, and obviously having the lights on when you're making videos is a big bonus. Uh, so thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, you can uh, join the Patreon party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop. Uh, and if you do, don't forget you need a credit or debit card to pledge your support, but those cards aren't charged until the first of the month. So it gives you a couple of weeks if you sign up now, almost three to uh, have a rootle around uh, the Patreon channel and see what I'm doing over there for my Patreon supporters. I, I do a weekly video for my Patreon supporters, which is rapidly becoming my second channel. And uh, those videos seem to be going down quite well. Sometimes they're behind the scenes, sometimes they're over the shoulders, uh, and sometimes they're just sort of vloggy bits and pieces of me going about my daily business. If that sounds like your kind of thing, then head over to patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop uh, to join the Patreon party. But that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.